economic theory. And economic theory, I'll just say, I, there's a very nice sentence of Ferenczi that, you know, <laughs> exemplify, exemplify what is psychoanalytic boldness, you know. To summarize his argument, he says something like this. Uh, pleasure in the intestinal contents becomes enjoyment of money, which, after what has been said, is to be seen as nothing other than odorless, dehydrated filth that has been made to shine. And then this we, we can say, yes, it's absolutely trivial, yeah. So, uh, to, to, to solve this problem, we need some kind of a theory, what is money, which lacks in Freud and psychoanalysis. Some kind of uh, uh, an economic theory, and I find the, the appropriate theories in Marx in, and, and in Veblen. I'll start with a very explicit formulation of Marx. Explicit uh, formulation explicitly speaks of rep repression. In Capital, when he describes how money emerges, uh, he describes how a certain commodity becomes money. In, this, in our case, it is gold or silver. One certain regular commodity somehow is chosen, socially chosen in a social interaction of commodities, that's what he calls it, somehow is chosen to become the, 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 the means of exchange. Uh, <coughs> when, this, uh, when this occurs, there occurs a, a certain fetishistic reversal. It appears as if money is immediately the store of value. As, as Marx uh, says, it, is, it, it appears that we buy everything with money because it is money. While in, in fact the reverse is true. Money is simply one place in this social structure. It is money because we can buy everything in with it, not because it has some natural, immediate property of storing values. And then after, after this, you know, after explaining this reversal, Marx had a very inter adds a very interesting sentence. He says something like, like this, but I'll say the exact thing. The movement through which this process has been mediated vanishes in its own result, leaving no trace behind. There is a movement that results in money, but this movement this vanishes within money. What here it says, I, I want to uh, emphasize the preposition in. It, it somehow the, 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 the historical movement that brings about money disappears within the object, in the object. And if we take seriously this, this preposition of you know, this, this claim of a historical movement disappearing in the object, I think what it says is that money is equivalent to a repression, to a certain kind of historical repression. Money is equivalent to the effacement of its own history. It is, in a sense, a minimal use of historical repression. Money is nothing but the fact that the object effaces its own history. Why this is so, to, 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 uh, to explain it, we can recall what economists used to say, the, used to call the mystery of money or the mystery of gold. This mystery is, is the simple fact that, you know, gold was one commodity among others, a regular commodity, and still somehow occupied uh, the place of uh, uh, means of exchange. And what Marx gives us is, uh, uh, I think, uh, a minimal explanation for this mystery. What he says is this, the fact that something is money, something is money, in so far it obscures, is, some commodity is money, in so far as it ob obscures the fact that it is just a regular commodity. To become money, certain commodity becomes money, but it's becoming is totally equivalent, it's becoming money, is totally equivalent to the effacement of this very uh, process of its becoming money. When it's money, he has, uh, Marx has a, a marvelous expression for it, which you know, echoes, could have echoed Freudian themes. He says, gold and silver, silver emerge from the bowels of the earth immediately to take on their position. It is, they, 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 to, to be money, they have to function as if they are immediately money. And this means that they efface their own history. So there is, a, in a sense, a minimal, a minimal use of repression here. I say minimal because money is nothing but the fact of repression. The, the becoming money is the repression of this very same uh, process. So as I said, this, this, uh, this uh, notion of repression relates to the grand narrative of money, to the grand history of money. 
It has nothing to do with the life of the individual. So in order uh, for this, in order for this idea to have some relevance to our issue, we have to find some, you know, more local parallels for it. How this notion of, of repression uh, has some meaning regarding the money object in its, you know, in its local uses. And, and I think that uh, the Marxist point of view shows a, a whole set of you know, such relevances. In, in broad terms, I can, I would, uh, <coughs> in general terms, I would phrase it like this. Uh, this grand movement of money appearing by repressing the past, repressing, repressing its own history, is the horizon against which Marx, it is the horizon that enables Marx to see all the in money as its positive qualities. Money has many absences that are related to it. It's useless. It is useless. It has no use. You know. It has no past. Not just in the grand, grand narrative meaning of the term, but in the immediate term. Money carries no traces of, of its past, of its immediate past. And this is one of the qualities of money. Uh, in our days, money, ever more, it lacks even a distinct materiality. You know, there is, uh, we can even, you know, trace a movement in which money becomes ever more thin, you know. And this, uh, and Marx's view of the grand history, as, of the history of the, the history of money as its own repression is the horizon that allows him to treat all these absences as positive qualities of money, as keys to its social nature, to the, also to the powerful social nature it has. For economics, these, these uh, absences are, are, are what caused, is what causes them to think that money is a perfect means. You know? Because it has no use, it has, no, it has nothing in it, it, only, it is only a means. Friedrich, Friedrich Hayek once uh, coined the term good money. You know, you know this term the good money in, in economics, it's, it's, it's quite the opposite of the uh, everyday use of the term. Good money, in Hayek's view, is money that you, you can theoretically dismiss, that you can treat it as a fully transparent medium, that in theory you can relate to it as just medium in, uh, in commodities. In a way, this exemplifies the fact that economics cannot really handle these lacks of money. It, it, in, a, in a way, it, it wishes money to really vanish. Yeah? It exposes the fact that economics really wishes money to, to vanish, to, 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 uh, to lose any, any quality at all, whatsoever. And for Marx, his treatment of these absences is the complete opposite. <coughs> the absences is in money that, that characterize money are, he sees them as its positive qualities. I can, there, there, there are numerous ways to, uh, to demonstrate this, but the simplest one is his uh, notion of capital, his concept of capital, or more precisely, of the transformation from money to capital. In capital, when he first introduces the, the, the notion of capital, even before he explains uh, things like surplus value or how capital revalorizes, revalor uh, how capital grows, he already uh, situates the notion of capital in the basic, in what he calls the uh, uh, circulation, the money circulation. Uh, money circulation is a kind of a circulation. The defining circula circulation that defines capital, uh, and its form is like this. It's it's the famous, you know, M C M tag circulation to everybody who, is, who knows some Marxist language. And what it's the the, the and, and the circulation is a circulation in which money is exchanged for commodities, only to be exchanged back to money of a greater sum. This is the M that starts the circulation and the M tag finishes it. And Marx uh, situates the concept of capital already in this form of, in, this, in the form of this circulation. And his argument is this, it is precisely because money lacks something, it has no use, that the, uh, the, uh, this circulation um, can have only one goal, which is an infinite increase. It is precisely because money has only corrupted that the only goal of this circulation is to increase. And because, because money is only quantity, it, it is also 
uh, circulation, what this drive to increase has no, infinite, has no definite goal. Yes, it must go on forever. Uh, maybe I have a very good. Marx says it, use values are never the immediate aim of the capitalist. And this, this is a sentence that says a lot, yes. It says that the uh, uh, pursuit of gain is somehow even uh, contrasted to any specific aim, to any uh, immediate aim of the capitalist. There's something inhuman in this concept of capital. Yeah, exactly, a, a, a certain inhuman drive, I would say. And we can see it in the, in the way that in this passage Marx treats the capitalist I'll quote his exact phrase, as a personification of capital. The capitalist in this case is capital personified and endowed with consciousness as a will. Um, so this is one way to see how uh, uh, the absence that characterizes money is a specific positive quality of it. And I believe that here we find the reason why, why the fact that Marx, you know, everybody knows that Marx is a historical thinker. But the question is, why is the historical nature of his work so relevant? Why, how does it produce such a big difference in relation to economy? How does it, it produce, you know, a radical alternative to economics? And I think here lies this, uh, uh, here lies this, the, the reason for this, the, for this fact, you know, the explanation for this fact. It is Marx's notion of, I could, would say it, historicity, the historicity of money is nothing but the repres repression or the effacement of money's past. And this historical uh, view is what allows him to, to see the absence of his money as its positive uh, qualities. If this sounds too abstract, I can give one demonstration for it. I don't know if it's a demonstration, but it, it, it relates to it. You know, we have this notion of new money, which is a very uh, intense, very dense social image, cultural image, the image of new money. It, it includes, you know, vulgarity and a certain antisocial behavior, which are all related to new money. And what I point you to is, is this, you know, this uh, uh, quali qualification of new. In, in a sense, money, Marx allows us, Marx says that every money is new. Money is always new. Money always, it's new. It always appears new because it always effaces its own past. And uh, in, in, in grand terms, maybe this is what, uh, what, what explains this, you know, this cultural phenomena. How come that the newness of money has such a specific social nature. Why? Why is there a specific social nature, very dense even, you know, social nature, that is attributed, attributed to the newness of money? And I think in a way that Marx allows ontological, Marx gives us an ontological background for this uh, cultural image. It, it allows us to point it in, in, in a really, in, in a social ontological, historical social ontological uh, quality of money. Uh, do I have enough time? Uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. <coughs> okay, so I will try to rush things. I want to point to a parallel to this economic uh, conception in Veblen, Thorsten Veblen. In Thorsten Veblen, most famous work is, uh, you know, the theory of leisure class. It is an economic theory that deals with the display of wealth. Economic theory, it's, it's a theory, uh, on the face of it, it's very remote from Marx, you know, because it deals with consumption. It deals with display, with the ways that uh, um, wealthy people display their wealth. And it's, it's not, you know, it's not like a, 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 a constructed theory like capital, a mechanism of society. It's more, it's more of an interpretative mechanism that allows us to to give an economic meaning to practices and things. I'll, 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 I'll give example for what, just one uh, argument of Veblen, because all his arguments are in a way, but many of them are repetitive. 